called it. Okay, I think we have most of us in on the call, so I'm gonna start my video and everything. Okay. It is about three minutes after three, according to my computer, and this is uh, October 25th, and it's the regularly scheduled meeting of the Citizens Advisory Commission. And to get started, you have received from Janine the agenda for today. And I would ask for a motion to either approve or amend the agenda. I move approval. Make a motion. Okay, it's been a moved and seconded to okay. approve the agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Seeing none, we will move on to the minutes of the meeting in September, September 27th. All those in favor of anybody has any significant changes that have to be made now. Otherwise, if you do not, then please uh, contact Janine directly if you have something that needs to be changed. I would uh, ask for a move a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Seeing none, we will uh, not try and even guess what is happening out in Washington, D.C. this time and in <laughs> happening with the Department of Defense budget. So we will move on to Dr. Watson, who I know was on the call somewhere. Hi, good afternoon, Irene and rest of the uh, CAC. Uh, not much movement, uh, uh, whether you're talking about Aqua headquarters or Capitol Hill. Uh, things are uh, where they are, and uh, we'll continue to uh, monitor the risks associated with the program and uh, happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions of Dr. Watson at this point? No. I don't see anybody raising their hand. So you're oh, off the hook. Perfect. Thank <laughs> you're you. off the hook at this particular time. I, and if you want to stay on and uh, I will absolutely stick around for the whole meeting. I always in, do. In the event that there are questions that come up later on in the meeting, that would be helpful. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Colonel you. McCutcheon, please. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Colonel McCutcheon here. So I have about uh, three different topics with a few subtopics I want to cover. The first one is on our permit renewal update. So we received our NODs, which is our second generation back from CDPHE. Um, we're working through providing responses right now. We get those responses back to CDPHE within the next couple of weeks. Now, we want to say that we really appreciate the close coordination with CDPHE. Um, I'm going to make make it my business to get there along with my um, my action officer Jamal Alves to make sure that we go over all our responses with CDPHE. We want to get that done for the next couple of weeks, but I'm going to go and spend some time with them myself and make sure that we understand where we're coming from and we can plan a, a good path forward for our closure plan. Uh, next for our community events, we've got a lot of different community events that we've been um, making sure that we attend and participate in. Um, this past weekend, we attended the Southern Colorado Food Distribution event. It was provided, it, it was for um, to provide us veterans with different types of food that they had there. So we were able to give out some food and we also were able to receive some food donations for and the many veterans that we have that work here at TCD. Um, next TCD, we're gonna partner with Vitalant to host an employee blood drive. And we're gonna have that on 30 October next week. It's gonna be in preparation for the winter months when you know those blood donations are needed mostly. Um, thirdly, TCD, we're gonna be participating in um, several upcoming Veterans Day ceremonies to include the Pueblo County High School Veterans Day Assembly, the Pueblo Veterans Council Riverwalk Ceremony, and the Greater Pueblo Chamber of Commerce Veterans Day Parade. So we get a chance to really go out, um, put our best foot forward 
with uh, utilizing a lot of the veterans that work here on the depot and get back out in the community and working with each other hand in hand. It's a good event for, and we look forward to attending it. The next is the uh, PCD Restoration Advisory Board. That meeting will take place on 13 November. Yes. Um, I was thinking, do we have any questions out there? Or here's some, some feedback. Okay, no? I think so. so. Uh, I think it's good. <laughs> yeah, I just had to mute someone. Go ahead. Okay. Um, next, doing that restoration advisory board, our base realignment and closure team will provide updates on any ongoing environment or projects that we have here and close your milestones during that meeting. And for our last community event, we're going to partner with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and we're going to do a black-footed ferret release here on the depot on the 15th of November. It's going to be approximately 22 ferrets that will be released onto the PCD footprint. So um, that's going to be a good event also. Um, lastly, I want to cover a few job postings that we have. Currently, we have an electromotive equipment mechanic, and that job listing will close on 31 October. Next, we have a general engineer, GS-12, that closes on 1 November. And then our final job listing is for firefighter, a paramedic, which is a GS-9 position, and that will close on 22 December. So that, that concludes um, my talking points for today. Wanted to cover, you know, how we're looking on our permit. Want to talk about some of the community events that we have going on. And then some of the jobs that we still have out there that we need to get filled. So standing by, paying any questions. Over. Are there any questions of Colonel McCutcheon, please? Oh, this may be an easy meeting so far. So uh, I'm off the hook, too. Okay. Yeah, you're off the hook, too. So what can I say? <laughs> uh, we'll move on to a report from Pablo Twex, Russell. Uh, good afternoon, Laura. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today, I'm going to turn over the floor to Laura Stalford on our team to discuss our recent workforce transition efforts and our reuse and facilities assessment activities. Uh, that are funded by the grant that we received from the Department of Defense. So let's turn it over to Laura for an update. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so like Russell said, wanted to provide a quick update, and this is related to the uh, Pueblo Area Defense Diversification Grant. Um, we recently held a, an update with the stakeholder group for our quarterly meeting, and that occurred last week, and it includes leadership um, from both PCD and PCAP, as well as Pueblo Plex, Petco, the Pueblo Workforce Center, and the Colorado Rural Workforce Consortium. Um, just a couple updates on projects. Um, for the reuse assessment studies, uh, we have the infrastructure analysis that's being finalized. And this study includes information regarding the remaining life cycles for existing structures, utilities and future maintenance and holding costs. Uh, the analysis also includes existing utility capacities and recommendations of those assets to be demolished or removed, um, as well as helping further inform public plex of uh, assets to retain for reuse. The reuse assessment market study draft is under review and we are working to, uh, it's working to final form. Um, and this study helps identify industries with a high potential for reusing a facility like PCAP, um, and that is also compatible and consistent with the Publiplex redevelopment plan that currently encompasses the 16,000 surplus uh, acreage. Um, related to workforce transition, there are several efforts underway um, and really gaining momentum. The workforce retention and transition evaluation, that study is being finalized for release um, that will come out next month. And this provides the perspective to the community of the transitioning depot and PCAP workforces, including RIF schedules, uh, positions and skill sets that are represented within those RIFs. Uh, the study also includes an evaluation of opportunities to uh, assist with retraining and identifying employment opportunities within the region to retain the workforce. Uh, through these grant efforts, we've been able to successfully assist in increasing coordination between the various workforce transition groups 
and those agencies with resources to assist in retraining, retooling uh, the workforce. Um, some of those include uh, OEDIC, the Office of Economic Development and International Trade, uh, CDLE, um, Colorado Rural Workforce Consortium that I mentioned earlier, higher education institutions and training providers, as well as uh, our regional workforce and veteran service centers. Um, as far as community outreach and engagement, um, as the workforce transition efforts are ramping up, um, we've started to uh, meet weekly, meet weekly um, and this is with uh, PCD, PCAP workforce transition, as well as uh, workforce center specialists. And um, this is to address each upcoming RIF uh, to prepare um, each one of those groups for transition. Um, we've had a lot of activity as far as the community outreach and engagement, and I'll just list a few recent events for sake of time. Um, Colorado Space Business Roundtable Board of Directors, uh, Kiwanis and Rotary Clubs of Pueblo, uh, the Restoration Advisory Board, SCED, which is Southern Colorado Economic Development District, Action 22, which uh, covers the 22 rural communities in Southeast Colorado, um, Mount Carmel Veteran Service Center and our local military affairs committee. Um, we have several engagements coming up with some larger community events planned in early 2024. Uh, next week, we will have a site visit along with our tenant MXV Rail um, with some economic development and workforce professionals from El Paso County. Um, we are also working to enhance our rural outreach efforts and I would Ask for any other suggestions or ideas um, for other groups to engage. If you have any thoughts, um, feel free to send them my way. And that's all I have for today, Irene. Thank you. Are there any questions of Laura or of Russell as to the workforce development and the attempts that are being made to re- position some of the people who are at the depot. Uh, Dr. Watson, did you have a question? I, I do. Uh, and I don't know if, if uh, Laura or Russell know the answer to this, you know, but since uh, June, we've had a couple of hundred folks uh, leave PCAP. Do we have an understanding of how many of those folks are sticking around Pueblo or Colorado um, uh, to better understand uh, the impact of these transition efforts? And that's a good question. Um, we are working on gathering um, some of that data on those that have already left the project. Um, I would say independently, the um, workforce groups, so for example, Amentum, Bechtel, they would within those groups have that information um, specifically. Uh, but we're, we've added data points of um, collection that we're needing to capture. Um, so we would likely have something to report on that specifically, but I would definitely um, open it up to anyone else that could speak to those specific workforces um, or we can work on um, getting that information to you. So Dr. Watt, yeah, so Dr. Watson, it's Todd Ailes uh, uh, at PCAP. Uh, I would say the majority of those, um, there's definitely some that stayed in community. There's some that retired. Um, definitely we've lost some um, uh, to certain jobs in the community, but out of the 10%, which I would say close to 160 that have departed the project, I would probably put it in that uh, probably 10 to 20%. Uh, at the most, the most of the others are, have moved on to other uh, DOD or, or DOE projects currently. Sure, great. Thanks for. That. I, I just think that's that would be something that would be useful for us uh, uh, collectively to track and understand um, what what the impact uh, of that is uh, on both the local community and the project. And thank you. Yep. John, you had a question. Uh, yeah, uh, we we're, we we can understand there are, there are three categories of uh, facilities out there. The ones that definitely can stay with no problem, the ones that are going to be torn down for sure. Uh, what's in the middle? 
as far as your your study is going. So, John, I'll I'll take that question. So, you know, there there are some facilities that are in the middle that you know can possibly be reused if we can achieve uh, the the cleanup standards that the state is is putting forth. Um, but there are some in the middle. The vast majority, I'd say, ninety nine percent, you know, of those facilities that have held mustard or have had any type of you know, contact, you know, we're just agreeing with the Army and the state, they just need to be demoed. Uh, but there are a couple of systems that are in that sort of middle or that gray area that we're still analyzing. Um, but it'll really uh, come down to, um, you know, can we rinse or clean those facilities to a level uh, that can meet the required standards. And I don't know if Cameron is our consultant from Matrix has just jumped on the, the call here as well, if you have any additional color that you might want to add to that uh, answer, Cameron. Um, no, and the, the ones that are still up in the air, we're talking about five assets, so a small percentage of them, but, um, you know, a lot of opportunity there nonetheless. So um, we are, you know, we're well into, we're at the end of this process, it's 12 months now. So we have all, all of the information we need um, from a ground assessment perspective, um, knowing precisely what we want to retain. And at this point, it's really just up to CDPHG on um, really that whole non-detect uh, discussion. So over. Thank you. Any other questions? Velma, you're on, on mute. Yep, I know. Okay. <laughs> um, the uh, um, Colonel uh, McCutcheon, I may have misunderstood, but I thought as he was concluding his remarks, he just commented that something about having uh, positions that they needed to fill, and I just wondered, um, it caused me to wonder, because uh, jobs are mostly going away, so I didn't know whether there was uh, an opportunity for some intersection there or, or what. Colonel, did you have an uh, answer to that question? To unmute yourself, Colonel, um, press star six on your phone. How's that? There you okay. Go. Yeah, <laughs> muted me again. I thought I, I thought I was already in the clear with being muted, but okay. So mm -hmm. to answer your question, yeah, even though we're going to you know our phase of closure operations, um, our first rift is going to be in March. I, I think that's going to affect about a hundred folks. It's about two hundred fifty positions. But we still have positions here that we'll need to conduct closure operations, setting down the depot responsibly and still safely like we've been doing the entire mission. So we're going to have a few folks in a few positions that are still going to be around, you know. So right now, the three positions that I mentioned are three that we're lacking right now. You know, firefighters, we're going to have to have firefighters and paramedics on the depot until we exit this, um, this mission. General engineer, that was the other one, you know, just doing just regular depo type operations, installation stuff when it comes to services. Um, and then our last one is our electro motive equipment mechanic. So these are just general type positions that you have to have to allow your installation to, to operate. So these are the compositions that we're still gonna have around. We won't have like chemical munition handlers anymore because that mission's over with, but other positions we will need some help with and these are three of them that we still um, have to fill so you know we're still projected to be around until 2028 so until that time we have to um, you know provide this installation services for the whole depot i hope that answers uh, your question over does that answer your question Dawn? okay great any other questions about uh workforce Reductions in force, whether it be at PCAP or at the depot. Ken, did you have something? You unmuted. Ken Griffin? Yes. Did you have something? No, not not really. I just I just wanted to know. Okay. Russell, if we come up with the Russell, if we come up with the price. Uh, on the version of the land on the depot? Yep. 
All right. I couldn't understand the question. I didn't either. So can you speak up a little bit, Ken? Yeah, I was just wondering if we if the army has come up with a price that the county double county has to come up with to, for the exception of the, the depot land. So, so Ken, we've agreed to a price <clears throat> that we will be paying for the property, um, but it's not public information yet. We still have to get to an actual contract. Um, so that'll be released, you know, once we sign all the sign all of the documents. Okay, you're still working on it then. So, I mean, the price has been established. We're still now working on all the paperwork that's required, um, you know, to get to a closing. Okay, thanks. Other questions? I don't see any, so we will move on to permitting and I'll start with you, Julie. Perfect, yeah, thanks Irene. Hi everyone. Um, we, yeah, again, not a huge update for me today. Um, we did approve two class two permit modifications since the last, um, the last CAC meeting in September, um, they were permit mods B060 and B061. And those, um, they were kind of, I won't say twin, but maybe sister um, permit mods. They both dealt with similar topics. Um, so they both kind of updated laboratory methods and procedures um, with, you know, just some various updates, including administrative updates performance and safety improvements, procedural changes, and additional clarifications of instructions for um, personnel and staff. So that was, um, yeah, I mean, we haven't really been approving a whole lot of mods lately because we've been out of operation. So that, um, yeah, we approved those two and then we just continue to work on closure. So um, we, yeah, we got the facilities responses to the NODs. Um, I want to say that I don't recall what date that was, but um, we gave some comments to them and um, we're kind of working with them on getting responses to those comments. So that's where we are right now. Um, we're basically in the process of getting the documents ready for the public comment period. And so I did mention, I believe I mentioned last time that there will be an additional 30 day public comment period um, once we get the documents to a place where we're happy and we feel like, you know, they're understandable, all the information is consistent throughout. Um, and so just keep your eyes out for that. Um, I don't have a timeline yet for it, but um, <clears throat> yeah, we will let you guys know when they're available for public comment and then we will continue to work through the documents. Um, these comments that we made were kind of high level comments, just, you know, inconsistencies we noticed some missing information. Um, and so, yeah, we've been working with the facility to update those and yeah, stay tuned. It'll be a, a great light read for all of you. So <laughs> get ready for that. <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's about all I have. I'm happy to answer questions if anyone has any. Are there any questions of Julie? I'm assuming that PCAP will cover the specifics of the permitting issues in your report is that correct i see some head nodding up and down yes that is correct okay, okay. so julie stick around in case you want to add okay. to it yeah for sure i'll be here to yeah chime in if i need to yes there are no other comments or questions for julie we will move on to uh john and the bio treatment mm -hmm. I see Patrick is there, and how are our bugs? Have, have the bugs starved to death yet? Well, we we got a few bugs still, and they're you know they're on a light diet, so they're trimming down like all of us should be probably. So, so yeah, go go ahead and move on in through the, the next slide, if you would. So again, we'll talk about the store what's in storage and the bio treatment and then the water recovery. So, you know, we're, again, we're down to just module 201. We actually have, uh, you know, clean harbors is going to be on the site working with module, module one. So 
you know, we're taking our opportunity of winterizing that module since it's not in service to, to kind of, you know, clean out as much waste out of that as we can in anticipation of, uh, you know, going towards closure. So we're still leaving all the, all the media intact and everything. So it still could be put back into service, but, you know, we're, we're doing as much housekeeping on that as we can. So, you know, our overall inventory of, of our diluted hydrolysate, you know, is, is around that 40% level. It was about 45 last month. I, as I recall, so we are on a downward trend. We're, reducing that inventory because we're you know we're not doing quite as much flushing as we were previously so we're we're drawing that down and uh, we're just doing kind of routine maintenance so go ahead and go on to the next slide so that and then i've kind of covered all that already so go go on again to the next slide so you can see here we're flowing more in that kind of seven eight gpm yeah, because the hydrolysate is much more dilute than it was previously, then we can feed it at a much higher rate. And then we add less dilution water as it goes into the ICB module. So we did have some blockage there at the beginning of the period, but now we're we're cruising right along and doing quite well uh, in terms of the, the flow through of the system. So next slide. Uh, and then here's our removal efficiency. So you can see our TDG concentration is is down, you know, basically, you know, 100 times from what we used to be. You know, we're at 200 parts per million instead of instead of 20,000. But so th this still would be 200 parts per million would be now we are in the realm of what would be comparable to a regular sewage treatment plant, the strength of the waste that they treat. So we are still, you know, treating a significant amount of waste. It's still a couple hundred parts per million. We're essentially removing that down to zero. Our removal efficiency stays near a hundred percent. And, you know, we're generally non-detect going out of the back end of the system. So it's working quite well, but obviously our, our bug, we've got fewer bugs in the bug hotel than we used to have, but, but the ones that are there are still eating away and, and getting rid of the, of the TDG that is in the kind of diluted hydrolysate or, or wash water or however you want to term it. So go ahead and go to the next slide. And so we we run the you know the water recovery system we run it as as needed so we are in operation now and generating distillate for reuse and again that runs on an intermittent basis as needed so and we're in, we are we are running at the moment and generating distillate for reuse and that's pretty much it it's kind of quiet over there at the BTA. Everything's going, going quite well. Any and you'll questions? be done by the end. Of, you'll be done before the end of the year. So, well, you know, we are kind of trying to manage the inventory. So we are looking. You know, originally we were kind of more in that springtime period, and now we've kind of backed up to now more, possibly around the January time frame. We are trying to you know, not run out of through it as quick as possible because until we get the go ahead and we can get into the equipment in the APB and start cracking that stuff apart and really doing that flushing everywhere, we still need the capability to bring that over to the system and biotreat all of that. So we, we're trying to hold on and keep the system availability up to treat that type of waste that will be generated once we're in that early stages of closure. Uh, how, are you, how are you going to flush? Uh, just, uh, do you go through uh, four drains or do you have or just put, uh, clean out the pipes one by one? Yeah, it's kind of cleaning out the pipes one by one. You know, there's lots of 
you know, dog legs and ups and downs, you know, in the piping as it goes from one vessel to another, you know, so eventually it's opening up the different inputs to the vessel and flushing through it and using, you know, kind of a, kind of roto rooter spinning type wands, you know, that, that, that power wash, basically kind of power wash out the inside of all the vessels and pipes, you know, but we've got it. We can't get all the way through doing that until we can do more disassembly. Uh, any other questions? Thanks, Patrick. You bet. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, we'll move on to uh, Walton and to Todd, and then we'll have our presentation on what's going on at PCAP. Okay. Uh, as Irene said, it's just Todd and myself as our usual partner in crime and stuff. Kim has uh, right, moved on one. to her next assignment within uh, Amentum, uh, and she will be missed uh, here, but Todd and I will keep the place running here for a while. So as usual, I'll let uh, Todd start with safety, and uh, he'll cover a lot of the plant ops stuff that Kim used to cover. All right. So we used to go next slide again. Kim departed at the beginning of October, um, but uh, we always still reinforce and, you know, working together and working safely. So uh, with that uh, happy report in September, we had no first aids or injuries. Again, our last OSHA recordable was the August 11th one, and that was the one that we were very conservative on uh, due to a bat. Uh, landing on an individual, um, and we, we gave them uh, the, the rabies shots. Uh, the staff itself, we continue to do weekly safety stand downs. We're doing contingencies, uh, uh, walking through some of the evolutions, uh, a lot of discussions. So we do those every Tuesday. We continue to do our, our drill program. Our slip simulator itself, uh, we've completed about 95% of the workforce. We wanted them to go all to go through that again before the winter months, especially if you see it on our graphs there that all, most of those injuries at the beginning part of January and February, uh, pretty much all of them were from winter weather and slip trips and falls. Uh, safety trained supervisor. In fact, I, I attended my safety leadership training last week, so we're sending uh, 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 folks back through that. Uh, we're doing the OSHA 10 courses. We started with our maintenance workforce. We have about 99% complete with all our uh, work uh, forklift recertifications and uh, reinforcement of, of spotter uh, and making sure we're, we're reinforcing the changing conditions. Um, that's gone well. Again, we're going to be moving more instead of munitions, we're moving waste. Uh, so we wanted to reinforce that with the team. So um, the safety refreshers are, are going well, but uh, we need to continue to operate safely as we move into closure. Uh, uh, operations here in the near future. You go on to the next slide. So let's talk about the main plant updates. Again, as far as, far as our enhanced reconfiguration building, uh, the equipment in there standing by, waiting for approval to start some removal or disassembly of the equipment. We're just doing routine maintenance, uh, just general housekeeping. Uh, and of course, we're meeting all our rec inspection requirements and permit requirements as we uh, currently operate on the current operating permit. Uh, our agent processing building, um, we're also standing by for removal. Uh, we're doing DP entries, uh, again, uh, gross decon, uh, washouts uh, similar uh, that was uh, just discussed. Um, uh, we are using some of the drains, but we're really just moving water through, through the systems. Uh, and then we're continue to do our record inspections uh, in according to the permit requirements. BioTreat is one that uh, uh, Pat just uh, mentioned. So uh, looking, as Dr. Watson stated last time, uh, we're waiting on the, the permit, uh, asking us to work together. I'll get to that on, on the actions we're doing. Uh, but we're also looking at, hey, what activity uh, do we uh, move up? Um, in order to try to uh, help engage the workforce and then release folks also uh, from the project uh, as we're waiting for the closure. 
Um, so trying to keep the workforce uh, uh, fully engaged. So uh, we're, we are winterizing that module one as, as uh, Patrick just stated. Uh, again, module two is online, but we are working to get the biotreatment area uh, down um, and uh, turned off here at the beginning of January. Uh, and uh, uh, so that's where we're, we're working for on, on the biotreatment. We also uh, want to say on the main plant, we did exit surety. Uh, so that was a major accomplishment by both uh, here PCAP and PCD. Uh, so uh, teams did a good good job with the transitions and, and that's gone well. I'll turn over to Walt real quick. He'll give an update on the hydrolysate processing and shipping. Yeah, so again, this is our last scorecard where we're holding on to as we work through uh, Pat did a good job of updating uh, where we're at on the BTA. I think the impressive thing on this slide is still the totals. We've run almost 200 million gallons of water through the BTA and recovery systems and uh, we utilized most of that. Uh, we kind of take that for granted on a day-to-day -day basis. Is, uh, we like talking to our bugs and gives us something to do, but uh, you know, that was really a major component of the plant and the operation here. Uh, and we'll keep that that going as, as uh, Pat mentioned. Also, you know, about 700 million or 7 million pounds, excuse me, of salt gate that we've generated uh, doing the hydrolysate stuff. So uh, the system has worked out quite well. Uh, and did the job we have, we have asked for. It. So next slide, we'll move on to the STCs. Yeah, so I'll take over again on the STCs. Uh, happy report that uh, uh, one unit will be going to Redstone Arsenal, this is the current plan, and two units to Aberdeen Proving Ground. Uh, uh, so uh, working that with, with the Army. On all three sites, we've ramped those down. Uh, ventilation remains online. We are currently doing some OTS cleanouts and uh, doing our annual corrosion inspections uh, to get that report over to CD uh, PHE. And then uh, happy to report that uh, uh, we did uh, get the overpack trial burn report acceptance. Uh, again, it's important to know. Uh, and document uh, uh, the status of that report and, and have that in case any questions uh, occur in the future. So coordinated that with CDPHE, they completed their review. So thanks to Julie and the entire team. If you go on to the next slide, let's talk about some other plant project areas. So our training facility at Ford Jetway, we are moving out of that facility and turning it over um, uh, to uh, Puebloplex here, uh, or not Puebloplex, but uh, Pueblo Economic Development uh, uh, Corporation, sorry, at the end of December. Uh, we have removed and dispositioned uh, the training equipment. No equipment has been declared surplus. Uh, they disposition equipment uh, to uh, DLA that cannot be released to the public in strict uh, military control. But we have set aside our keeping in storage items that will be beneficial for the local redevelopment authority. Uh, definitely the robot itself it, it has been set aside in some of those others. So, Russell, I know uh, the team is, is abiding by all the agreements and in, in trying to have those set aside uh, for the future for the local redevelopment. Um, we re relocated training activities to on site. So we're moving some of our well, when we do our DP uh, suit trainings in, in what we call a, a tap training. We're moving that into our ECRs. Uh, we moved our document controls uh, group out from here in our PSB building. And we set up a training uh, room there. Uh, we moved them over to Jetway One. Jetway One will continue to operate. That'll be some of our uh, documents. A lot of our, again, contract closeouts. We moved HR and other personnel into, into Jetway One, but we will be moving out of, of uh, Jetway Four at the end of the year. Now I'll turn over to Juan real quick to talk uh, a little about the outreach office closure. Yeah, so we've been reporting last several meetings and stuff that the outreach office is is closing. Uh, that's been a fixture uh, in the community for a couple decades now. 
Uh, that's probably one of the first presents to the program and the project at here in the community. Uh, but by the end of November, uh, we will uh, be closed to the public. Uh, what little is left in there, uh, well, there's a few desk chairs, uh, those type things. Uh, those will be gone by December. And then uh, about half the staff will uh, sail off into the sunset in retirement. Uh, one will continue uh, supporting Aqua headquarters in a capacity. And then uh, we'll move Cora out here with us. She's out here with us most of the time anyway. And she does the day-to-day -day public affairs stuff uh, for the field office and stuff. So uh, sad to see that, that facility go, uh, but it is a, a good symbol that uh, we are uh, reaching the end of the project and, and starting those inroads. Okay, next slide. Go to the next slide. This is, I think, what Irene was, was asking about the status update on some of the permit. And the main one being the NOD response uh, for uh, B071, which is the main plant uh, closure uh, permit. Uh, we had sent those NOD responses uh, last week. Uh, Julie and her team uh, uh, had additional information request uh, that came over on Friday. Um, we are working that. The first one is being around the closure plan update on performance standards. Uh, we had done a risk-based standard that was more developed that leveraged a lot of the universal treatment standards. So questions around that for pre-demolition and unrestricted reuse uh, that the team is, is working. Uh, there was one about generated waste. Uh, we had two spots. We had taken out all newly generated waste. Uh, out of the closure plan, but there was two spots that still had that. We, we are removing that. But really the second bullet is more around, uh, we had aspects of 90 day storage um, and uh, re understanding more our container management to a program and, and calling that out. So uh, we're adding additional details similar to the operating permit around the management of the container management programs and the 90 day storage uh, locations like we'll need one for the roll offs when we do uh, demolition. Uh, and uh, that was uh, discussions to make that more a permitted uh, storage locations. So getting those requirements uh, defined in, into the system. So the team is working that and hope to have that response back over to the state uh, early next week. Um, but th those are the main ones out of, out of uh, bullet number two. Uh, the last one is on process uh, water systems and really uh, requesting sampling of some of the areas that are not permitted um, and, and for unrestricted reuse that are not part of our hazardous waste management unit type equipment. Uh, the main ones being that uh, sampling of the process water, chill water system, our, our, our RO system, and uh, boiler system. So. Uh, we're working to put that sampling in there. It'll be similar for the other reuse uh, that those will have to be uh, uh, samples uh, that satisfy uh, a non-detect um, uh, requirement in order for, for reuse. Um, again, uh, working with the state, they'll determine, as Julie stated, uh, when they could go into a 30-day public comment period uh, uh, for um, you all to, to look at. In addition, we submitted, again, as uh, stated before, I'm trying to keep the workforce engaged. So we've been working on the STCs itself. Uh, we're getting to the point, even on the STCs, uh, that we don't have a lot more activity for them. Uh, they've done the PMs and, and items uh, that they can perform. So we're working to start their, uh, uh, some notifications for them in the near future. Uh, in addition, we're looking at, at uh, similar, and I'll discuss that in, in the slide here in a minute. So we did do a request uh, to the state to consider authorization to remove our cavity access machines. Those are the eight ICAMs, the 105, 105 CAM and a 155 CAM. Similarly, we've done in, in uh, changeover activities, uh, both munition washout system robots and components for what we call our PMD projectile mortar disassembly systems that's in our ECRs 
and some abandoned BO5 piping that was abandoned per, per our permit. Um, so uh, I know Julie and the team are assessing that. Uh, definitely, I know uh, we sent them some information between how we have our current operating permit uh, WAP with the closure, proposed closure WAP, but uh, uh, the request is at least can we do some of that disassembly, uh, containerize it, and then not, not even ship it. I, I know, I know, uh, I believe CDPHE is adamant about no shipment until the permit's in place, uh, but they are, they are evaluating it. Uh, Julie, I don't know if you have any more to say on that or not, uh, but I know your team was looking at that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll just say, yeah, we're still evaluating it. Yeah. You hit the nail on the head. Um, okay. there are, yeah. I mean, there are some pretty extensive permit conditions associated with um, the request. So we're, you know, we're just digging into the permit right now. So um, yeah, we should have, we should have more info next week. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. That's uh, helpful on uh, potentially if we could have that for some of the workforce stay engaged. And then on PR, PMR uh, 28, this is our SDC closure plan update. Uh, we are making changes similar that we're doing on the main plant, but we want to have the main plant, those items uh, lined up before we submit the, the final closure NOD response. Uh, so that way we don't get the same comments back. So the team is trying to make all those adjustments uh, to the closure plan updates uh, as we move through the main plant closure uh, update and NODs. That's great. Can we pause right here, please? Uh, Terry has a question or comment or both. Yeah, uh, just a quick question. I'm not sure who can answer it, uh, whether it's Walton or, or Todd, but on the outreach office, uh, I know there's not a lot of stuff in there, uh, but uh, it, you indicated in your slide it was basically it was being moved out. Uh, I guess my question is, is what's where, where's it going? Uh, not the least of which um, there's several items that were in there that are pretty valuable from a historical preservation perspective that we've been talking about. So uh, I didn't hear, uh, I apologize if you said, but I didn't hear where it was going. Yeah, so a lot of, uh, we've been working with some of the local museums and those type things uh, for some of the displays, the maps. Uh, and so we found homes for a lot of that. Uh, type material. So, and uh, we keep uh, going out looking at other venues and stuff. Uh, and that'll mostly be for the models and stuff we have here in the uh, PSB and stuff that we've had. But uh, we've been pretty successful of putting little displays in a number of the, the museums and uh, within Pueblo or Pueblo County. Okay, that's what I was hoping, Walton. And we've had this conversation, and there's I've got a little dual uh, uh, involvement here. I'm on uh, the board on several of those museums, just wanting to make sure that stuff didn't get hauled away. No, the only thing they'll get rid of is me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Irene has a question as well. Yeah, I have a question, um, and I don't know if it's to Todd or to Julie, frankly. Will the fact that there is a disposition in the United States within the Army for the three SDC units make any difference to the closure plan for uh, PMRS SO28? Uh, I don't believe so. I believe our, what we're doing is we're similar like the main plant. We are putting in... Uh, 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 wording for reuse and reuse to be G to GPL levels. And then there will also be, if there's portions that they do uh, not want uh, for that, that would have to be uh, through demolition and the, those same requirements. Okay. That's the only question I had. Thank you. All right, go to the next slide. Let's talk about staffing as, as Dr. Watson stated. So uh, we have performed 10% of the workforce reduction. So we dropped about 160 uh, uh, personnel. Uh, some of those were open positions that, that we canceled, uh, but uh, at least a good uh, 50 
60% were probably uh, releases. Um, again, some of those would did go to the local community. And what we've been trying to do is um, we're trying to coordinate release dates. So if someone has an opportunity, and, and let's be honest, there's still a lot of folks that want to stay in Pueblo. Okay, so I know Russell, the team working to have additional opportunities, but the truth is this is probably one of the better paying positions that are out there. So we are working with our teams to try to keep those workforce that wants to stay here, Pueblo, want to stay here after on the project. So get them cross-trained, get them developed, get them, get their ORDs extended out. So we're extending some of those folks out that want to stay here. Maybe they were supposed to be released. Someone else had an opportunity uh, that they want to depart. Uh, so they're trying to do that. Again, as, as best we can for uh, the skill mix. Uh, there might be some that we cannot support that because uh, the other the other personnel don't have the training, but us as a project are trying to do that as best we can. Uh, the Pueblo uh, team, though, will be reducing the workforce an additional 230 employees starting in January. Uh, Warren Act notifications will be going out here in the next two weeks. Um, this is work that, uh, again, uh, we're trying the work we're trying to accomplish uh, while we're uh, working to get the closure permits. Uh, so we, the biotreatment operations of, of shutting that down will have uh, impact to personnel. Uh, so we'll be releasing those starting the January timeframe. And as I stated before on our static detonation chamber, um, we're pretty much at the point of, of the PMs and, and the activities that they can do out there. Uh, we'll be getting to where we would need the next decontamination with the closure permit. Uh, so we'll be going to a release there and, and minimum staffing on the static detonation chamber uh, as we wait for that permit to come through. Uh, so 230 additional employees uh, starting in, in January uh, of uh, next year. Any questions on that? So to support that, uh, we are doing an additional job fair. If you go to the next slide. So we'll have additional job fair. We have our corporations and projects coming in. You see some of them that are listed on there. Uh, we're working to get some possible others from our corporations. Uh, so this would be the second one with the corporations. We've had some, some uh, single ones here and there from the corporations come in or even outside. Uh, it did, again, we did a, a additional job fair for the local community. So really this would be more of our third uh, major job fair. Uh, but it'll be November 8th and 9th. We're going to do the first day out here at the, the site uh, for the folks. And then the other one, November 9th, we'll, be, we'll do at the Jetway 4 facility uh, that uh, we work in to, to clean out. Um, so that should support the, uh, them, depending on where they're at in town or, or uh, if they were off on their days to support that out of the 230 and anybody else. Um, so as stated, um, with Russell and his team, the resume and interview workshops are ongoing. They've actually uh, uh, increased. We just did another one uh, yesterday uh, out here. So uh, folks, a lot more folks uh, attending those. And then in addition, uh, working with the commander and his team, he discussed this, uh, his release of about 100 folks. Uh, PCD will also be participating and uh, we gave them opportunity to attend this job fair also uh, for looking some op for opportunities of, of their folks uh, for future jobs as they perform their reduction in force uh, starting at the beginning of 2024. Any questions on the job fair? Todd, I don't have a question on the job fair, but I do have by the end of, or let's say by the middle of 2024, what do you expect to be your employment rate at uh, PC at PCAP? So right around March, I expect it to be at twelve hundred. Okay. And then, um, so we're right around fourteen thirty right now. So again, we'll we'll be losing those additional two thirty. Uh, we've been losing anywhere right around, um, we'll say average around twelve to fourteen a month right now uh, that are not waiting for their org release dates. Um, um, and again, as Kim stated before, there's some that, Hey, they, they, they want to, uh, have, have some work to go ahead and perform. Uh, so, 
Uh, we've lost about uh, between 40, 45 folks in the three months that have not waited for their org release date and departed the project. So I continue, I think that trend will continue. So if you continue that on for another three, uh, five months, it's probably additional 50 some folks. So we'll be right around 1150. When we look at any new positions right now, we're evaluating anyone if it's critical to be filled. Uh, I am challenging our folks to, to look at that because uh, 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 of of making sure um, we have the good work for them to be performed out here, not getting folks on there. We have some critical positions. We are doing a new new hires for, but it's very limited. I think I just did one a couple of weeks ago, and there was four people in the class. Um, so we are still doing some critical positions that are needed for the project, uh, but uh, challenging that. In addition, while we're waiting on the the uh, working back and forth on the closure permit, um, working to loan folks to other projects. Uh, I could do that eas more easily on the Bechtel side uh, compared to the Mentum side and the Battelle side. Um, so uh, we are trying to uh, look at that of trying to put some folks on short term assignments, uh, letting them go to some other projects. Uh, that way they're they're uh, not charging uh, the closure while we're, while we're waiting the closure permit. Okay. I assume and maybe wrongly that the 12 to 15 per month that are leaving probably are already have a job lined up. Yes. Yeah, or other plans. Yeah. Uh, maybe retiring, following a spouse uh, yeah, or, we've had or job. Yep. But they have something lined up. They're just not going to be sitting at home and watching soap operas. That's correct. <laughs> Unless they hit that lottery. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, that could be. <laughs> So if you go to the next slide, uh, similar as the commander stated, again, we, we continue to do as, as, as much as we can with the community. Uh, you know, with the school season uh, kicking off, we did do a stuff the drum school supply drive out here. Happy to report that we got 16 drums filled with school supplies, backpacks, all the school supplies. Uh, you can see our team delivering them out to Avondale Elementary School students. They were very appreciative of, of, of the support from PCAP. Um, we are doing our taste of uh, PCAP uh, next week. It'll be our kickoff for United Way campaign. Uh, we'll be fe featuring a cooking competition for entree, a side, and a dessert. Uh, I actually uh, lowered the cost of that and said I, I, I would support that uh, with additional donation to United Way in order to get more, more folks uh, participating and, and get the United Way campaign uh, kicked off uh, properly to support the community. And then additional, uh, of course, always our, our team is looking at, at supporting the community during the holidays. Uh, so we have the Angel Wreath uh, project. Uh, our team does a great job uh, of trying to give out to the, the local community and, and those in need, especially uh, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, to support them having a, a merry, uh, a happy holidays. And, and uh, we'll be giving gifts and, and what they need uh, list from them uh, for uh, donations. And then it's weird. I don't, I'm trying to understand our holiday, but apparently it's a good holiday feature to throw a pie in a manager's face. So uh, we are doing a pie in a manager raffle. Uh, so proceeds are going, of course, uh, to good causes. Uh, Boys and Girls Club, uh, Pueblo Rescue, uh, again, we have a lot of folks uh, even on their boards uh, for that uh, Pueblo Co uh, Co Cooperative uh, Care Center and Pause for Life are the ones that will be selected. So, yes, they have volunteered me uh, to go up there and get pies thrown in my face uh, for a good cause. So um, th th that's the holiday spirit. Thanks, Todd. Uh, we'd be remiss. Uh, during this meeting, uh, not to say farewell and thank you to Mr. Abay for his uh, guidance and leadership over the last, it's about five years or so, uh, you know, the majority of the operation phase here. Uh, we've come a long way uh, under his leadership, again, and guidance and stuff. So just wanted to take a minute and give a shout out and a few pictures here. Uh, to commemorate 
Uh, I believe it's his retirement at the end of November. Okay, next slide, please. And that is always, uh, we seem to be a place where people like to come and, and look and talk and ask questions. Uh, so we did have a reporter from the Denver Post here recently. Uh, they toured not only our facilities, uh, but I believe they also touched base with PCD and Kevloplex at the same time and kind of got the whole depot uh, story and history and uh, a lot of uh, what he was looking for was future, future use and how we tie those three organizations together. So next slide. So that's our update for the month, uh, pending any comments or questions. Other questions, uh, uh, Todd or other Walton, as we move forward? I do not see any. Are there any comments for any questions for any of the presenters, uh, Dr. Watson, Russell? Seeing none, everybody's off the hook. I want to remind you that our next CAC meeting will be December 6th. This is a change from a previous published date of December 13th. It will be December 6th. The, uh, it'll be a virtual meeting as we have had the most of this year. I want to wish you a safe and happy Halloween as well as a happy Thanksgiving. And we will see you all on December 6th.